Yo, what is up? This is Danny with Perry Design, bringing you the first and only way to data mosh inside of After Effects. Traditionally, this was a pretty hard effect to accomplish, and it relied on using janky old video editing services. We're going to be showing you exactly what data mosh is and how to accomplish it all with inside of After Effects. So what is data mosh? Let's start by understanding a little bit about video compression. When compressing a video, individual frames are stored as either delta frames or iframes. Iframes are what store the majority of a video's data. They contain an entire set of pixels inside of them. In order to reduce the size of a video, not every frame in a video is an iframe. Some frames only contain data on where pixels from the previous frame are moving to. These are called delta frames. They reference iframes in order to decide where those iframes pixels are moving to. So instead of having to store an entire set of new pixels, they only have to store information on where those previous pixels are moving, which takes up a lot less memory than storing full images. So what the f is data mosh? Data moshing occurs when we mess around with the video's delta frames and iframes. When we do this, there are two primary effects that we can generate. When we delete a video's iframes, we are removing the core data that tells a video how to switch scenes. This results in a video's previous scene's pixels being moved around by the subsequent delta frames of the next scene. The other way we can data mosh is by duplicating a video's delta frames. This results in what is called the bloom effect, and what we can see is the same pixels being repeated over and over again along the same path. Now that we've had some time to learn about what data moshing is and how it works, let's figure out how we can do it all with inside of After Effects. So here it is, here we have it on the top right screen over here, um, and we're going to go through these different tabs on the, uh, on the right. So this is our first and uh, primary tab that we're going to be using when we're data moshing. This is all the different inputs and variables that one would want to mess with when tearing apart clips. Uh, the one below that is going to have some different options. So we have a debug mode that we can toggle in and out of and also some different outputs that we can render to. Feel free to take some time to mess around with these various settings, but if you just want to render out some crazy moshes, you can just stick with lossless with alpha. Uh, below that, we're going to have some information about data mosh. Uh, it's created here in Lexington, Kentucky. And it'll also be able to show you the tutorial that is uh, embedded with inside the program. Now, I'll leave that up for you guys to find out exactly what's inside of there. Maybe there's some goodies. Who knows? Before we go into the different inputs that we have available to us within this panel, let's talk about the actual workflow of how data mosh works. So data mosh works in kind of three steps. First, it renders out what you have in your workspace. Now, that is specified uh, in, by these handles that you can drag in and out, or by hitting B to start the beginning and N to set the endpoint. So it renders out this space, then it takes it into the background and moshes it with the inputs that you specify within here. Since it's actually breaking the video, we need to mosh outside of After Effects, and then once it moshes outside of After Effects, it gets inputted back into your timeline. As you can see, we have some different variables and inputs that we can mess around with here. We have this duplicate delta frames toggle, and with inside of here, there's some different inputs. We have this remove frames toggle, where we have an intensity slider input. And also we have a bunch of drop downs from this uh, menu here. And these are different presets that we've kind of experimented with and have, have had some good results with. Let's talk about how we can use this to duplicate some delta frames within this video. So I have this video here in my composition, and stuff is guy skateboarding. And then he falls down. So I felt like this would be a cool one to duplicate some delta frames on. So what, am I gonna, what I'm going to do is first set my beginning point of the video. Now I'm going to set that right here. Now I usually just try and decide where I want this based on where there's a lot of motion and uh, where I want the start of the effect to happen. So right here while he's falling is a pretty good point to start with. Uh, next I want the effect to run through this entire uh, time length right here. So I'm going to hit my endpoint at the end of this. Let's define some variables for how we want this clip to be data moshed. So with inside of here, we have variables for interval, duration, and end. Let's set the interval to be uh, 5 frames. Let's set the duration to be 7 frames. And let's set the end to be, let's say, 30 for, or, yeah, let's go 30 frames. Uh, don't worry about this force re-render toggle. Uh, we're going to address that in a second, but keep that toggled for now. Then let's hit that data mosh button, see what happens. Boom. So it's going to render out in the render queue. Now it's moshing in the background with these variables that we define. And it just imported back into our workflow. Let's realign that clip and see what we got.
Wow. All right. So let me talk about a little bit of what happened here. So let's start with duration. So we set a duration of seven frames. That means how long this clip is actually going to be mosh for. You can see these uh, pixels kind of being overlaid on top of each other like this. Now that's going to happen for seven frames. After those seven frames are completed, we're going to have a five second interval or pause. So, or five frame interval. So after five frames, five frames goes by, and then we're going to have that same uh, mosh happen again for seven more frames. Now that's going to keep going either until the end of the clip or until this other end variable that we defined. So if we go to the end of the clip here and go back 30 frames, you can see that there's no effect getting, uh, taking place at the end of this clip. Let's talk about how different variables are going to affect a clip differently. So let's change this interval to be something crazy high like 3,000 frames. And let's change this duration to be, uh, let's say, 30 frames. So what this is telling the program is that instead of having the mosh happen every 10 frames or so, we only really want the data mosh to happen once uh, or at the beginning of the clip. Uh, that's because we cranked up this interval to be so high. This is a good time to address that force re-render toggle. So when data mosh renders a video and moshes it, it first renders it in the render queue. It then takes that video rendered from the render queue and moshes that in the background and imports a new clip. So once it's rendered in the render queue, if you just want to mess with some of the variables inside of a data mosh panel, you don't have to render out a whole new video through After Effects in the render queue. So in those instances, once we've rendered out a clip and we just want to mess around with the interval duration and or remove frames toggle, uh, we can leave this untoggled and I'll just go through the last exported video from the render queue uh, that we data mosh and apply this, these new variables to it. So in this case we can leave this unchecked because we already have a video that we rendered out and we just want to apply some new toggles, some new inputs to that video. So let's delete this old video and hit data mosh and let's see what happens. Alright, so Keep in mind we had that workflow start point to, to be here the last time we rendered out and so that's why the clip is this long. And it just took that already rendered out clip, moshed it again with these new variables and imported it back into our timeline. So let's see what that looks like. So that, as you can see, was a duration of 30 frames that was moshed. And you can see how these pixels are just being layered on top of each other in a really trippy way. Something that you can never really do in After Effects before this. Keep in mind that if you do anything to affect the video in your timeline, you're going to want to have to uh, check this force re-render toggle before you hit that data mosh button again. So for instance, let's say I wanted to scale this up a little bit and you know rotate it for whatever reason. Whenever you affect how the video looks with inside of here, you're going to have to make sure you hit this force re-render button and make sure that it's checked when you hit data mosh again. The same thing holds true for when you switch uh, a project or you go to a different comp and you're working with something else other than the exact video that you rendered out. Make sure that this is checked. Let's talk about the second form of data moshing, the iframe removal effect. That is accomplished within this remove frames toggle. So essentially what this does is it goes through the rendered video and it deletes out the iframes and also frames that have a lot of data in them. Now this is kind of controlled by the intensity slider that we have here. So let's set this intensity to be something like, I don't know, 42%. Uh, percent. I have our in and out points already set at the beginning and this is kind of what the video looks like. And there's the end of our video right here where that out point is. Uh, let's hit data mosh and see what happens. All right, great, so we just got that video back imported into our timeline. Now, I also wanna note real quick that since I was in a, in a new scene and making a new video from a new timeline, I had to make sure that this force re-render toggle was checked. Anyways, let's take a look at what we got. All right, some really trippy stuff. Now I think you might notice that this M video, there wasn't any effect on here. 
Now, when this happens, it's always best to just go through and play with this intensity slider a little bit more. So let's crank that guy up a little bit more to, let's say, 66. Since we already rendered out a clip from this timeline, we don't have to have this force re-render box checked. So let's uncheck that and hit Datamosh again. All right, now this is looking pretty trippy. Let's take a look and see what we got here. There's that effect that we were trying to go for. Since there's no new iframe to differentiate these clips, this, these pixels from this previous clip are going to be tracked onto the delta frames from this following clip. So as you can see, this is the effect that we get. I hope by now that you've learned a little bit about what data moshing is and how to do it all with inside of After Effects. I want to stress how important it is to experiment with this stuff. You can really get some crazy looking effects by using different variables, clips, and even effects on those clips. So get out there, try some new stuff, and be sure to tag us with your creations at datamosh underscore AE. Thanks guys. Now go break some